Okay, today is a real quick walkthrough of how to build an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline like this one, from pre-processing to training to accuracy evaluation to registering a model with SageMaker pipelines. Let's get to it. Today we're working in SageMaker Studio. Whether it's the best place to build your uh, ML pipeline with SageMaker pipelines, still an open question, but we'll leave it out of this video. We'll start with opening a Jupyter Notebook. We have one pre-warmed for us. And quickly go through the structure of our pipeline, which at this point doesn't exist yet. Should appear here. Bunch of imports here, nothing interesting. We're creating folders for our data and scripts, initializing sessions. Now this pipeline session variable is interesting because you, you will be changing it to something called local session uh, when testing locally. And then during your automated deployment, you'll swap it with, with this one to run in SageMaker environment. Now let's get to the gist of the problem that we're solving. We are working with a data set that describes abalones. For those who don't know what those are, because I just learned it myself, abalones, those are shells like that, very interesting creatures. And what we're going to be doing with those creatures, uh, predicting their age based on parameters such as size and weight, stuff like that. Then our pipeline consists of the preprocessing step, which basically selects the feature, does some massaging, data normalization, data cleansing, filling in the gaps, training the model, evaluating the accuracy of the model. If the accuracy is good enough, we create and register a model and then do a batch inference. In SageMaker world, it's called transform job. And if, if it's not good enough, we'll fail the pipeline. Here we're downloading the data set from buckets provided by AWS. Um, we can take a look at the data. So the initial data set with which we'll be working looks like this. And then there is a batch data set. Unfortunately, Jupyter doesn't visualize it nicely, but it's in essence this. So this is kind of like the data format that SageMaker expects for batch inference. Each row has a numbered features, and then this is the label that we're predicting. Moving forward, we get our data, we upload it to S3. Now, these four are parameters and they will specify for our pipeline number of instances, whether the model needs a manual approval to be deployed, and then two paths for input data. Uh, now we're at the pre-processing step. Uh, we're using this scikit-learn processor like you'll see all of those steps they're quite similar i guess for me the interesting part was that we always specify the instance type to run that step on and then inputs and outputs those are quite handy because each next step will be referencing inputs and outputs of the previous step and in this case we're kind of bringing our custom pre-processing script which i'll show you in a second here same thing we're using scikit-learn we're selecting our features, we're filling in the gaps, we'll do some normalization, and then we're splitting our data set into train, validation, and test. So that is the step that will, like that code with those inputs would run this instance, and that's the step process. So we create that atomic step in here. Now we're moving on to training step. Here it gets a bit more kind of elaborate. We're not providing a custom script, but we're kind of pulling the image of this XGBoost algorithm. Same thing, we're providing the kind of instances details that it should run on. Um, it's a linear regression problem. And then we're specifying the, the train and test of well, train and validation data sets that would take from the previous step. So that's how this entire dependency graph is built. And then we same thing, create a train step. Now goes evaluation, a custom script, and there we calculate the mean square error and the deviation for it, and we store it in a JSON file. It all lands in S3 in the end of the day. 
Mm, let's see, that's the report. Again, that's the processing step. By the way, you won't find, so if you kickstart this entire pipeline, which we'll do in a second, each of those steps will create a job. So some jobs you might be able to see in here, for example, inference training, etc. But these jobs that are processing steps, so feature engineering and model evaluation, because we're using this processing step, you won't be able to see it here, which is weird. So I would expect that everything should be visible here, but you would be able to see those in the vanilla SageMaker interface. That's that's where I say that kind of, it's not quite clear where your boundaries of your kind of ML operations be entirely in the studio or should it go outside of it. Mm. Then, okay, then we evaluated the accuracy and they have this conditional step. If, if we're happy with the accuracy that will create the model, register it and do our batch inference. And if not, we'll, we'll fail. Um, here, all the kind of inputs to create the model, and that's a step create model. And this is our batch inference in SageMaker world. It's called transform. Um, okay, that's 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 interesting. Here we're registering the model, so step register. And here, as an, as model metrics, we specified that JSON generated by the eval step. Here's kind of awkward how we pull that out because usually we do it more gracefully. So how we pull out the of outputs of the previous step, for example, um, like here. But I'm still kind of like figuring my way out what the best way to do it is. Um, then we'll register. This is our conditional step, which basically says, okay, so the threshold for the mean squared error is six. If it's less than that, fine. Um, where's that? Okay, if it's less than that, re register, create model, and do the batch transformation, otherwise fail. And that's where we put the pipeline together. So we specify all the steps that go into it. We don't specify the dependencies because the dependencies are already implicit into the inputs and outputs, right? So we reference kind of previous steps or the next steps. Um, now let me run this entire notebook through and we'll, we'll well, yeah, I guess we could already take a look at the pipeline definition because I've done it once. So once once you create this object, it still doesn't exist here. Still not there. It's still only here in kind of your in your code. And you could take a look at the final pipeline definition. It's actually useless for a human, but you can do that. So under the hood, it's all big, huge JSON. Uh, and when we create the actual pipeline by running this pipeline absurd. Now let me run through all the cells once again and you'll see that um, the pipeline gets created. Actually, let me comment this out so, so you'll see that is actually happening. Okay, now let me run through all of the notebook real quick. Okay, we're through. The pipeline still doesn't exist, so for all pipelines here, we'll run this cell through that will register the pipeline and actually create this in SageMaker interface. There you go, that's our pipeline. And then we can either kickstart through here, just create an execution, so specify all the input parameters, or do it from here. I'll just do it from code. Uh, pipeline start, you have this kind of an execution object that gives you kind of the metadata on the current state of execution. Um, might be helpful. There are other functions. Uh, but now you see that the our abalone pipeline is executing. And you see that currently it's at the pre-processing step. Now we'll fast forward to place and time where the pipeline is through. It took our pipeline 12 minutes to run through successfully. There was one failed attempt. And actually, let me show you the failed attempt first. So highlights the node and then um, all the parameters. And I guess here, here are the logs, then you can click through, get uh, to CloudWatch. 
from here uh, but let's go back to the successful execution so here's a successful one I ran through all those steps so the precision was good enough so it created and registered the model um, we could take a look at the registered model that's called like a model group it's still pending manual approval to be deployed uh, so it can, interesting it took me a while to understand why i cannot see the metrics but then i noticed that it's a training tab and we created metrics at evaluation, at evaluation steps so these are our metrics and then you can kind of like uh, do do your approval here and but this this is a nice segue to show you the s3 interface i'll try to navigate to s3 through one of the steps of the pipeline to show you how it's all connected. So here at the evaluation step, here's the kind of like the output folder. There, there, is, there is a bug, it thinks it's a file. So it says, I cannot open this file. But if you just go back, you will see that, okay, here's this JSON. Mm, we can take a look, it's just like super simple. So it's just that dictionary with uh, the value and then deviation. And you see it's below six, so it was successful. And another thing, for example, the outputs of the pre-processing step, right? So our data says that you also neatly stored here, same bug. And what I like, it's all kind of versioned with this hashes and so all your history is tracked automatically which you can later use for evaluation and comparison another thing so for example for the training step there is a link that leads us to a job which takes us out of the studio environment that's what i meant that it's not clear where the actual processing units sit um, and that's that that's how you build SageMaker pipelines for doing really anything with your models it was a very simple end-to-end -end walkthrough and I'll post the links to the actual tutorial that I followed under the videos as well as the repository for this Jupyter Notebook. Hope it was helpful. Let me know what you think.